David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you another pen from Anoto. Uh, Van S Pens had sent along a couple of Anoto pens for me to share with you. Um, I reviewed the Magna Sequoia a while back, and today I have another pen of theirs called the Scholar. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Anoto Scholar, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Vanis Pens for providing the pens you will see today on loan for review. Um, I mentioned it in the previous Anoto review, but if you are not familiar with the brand, they are based in England. Uh, the company was founded back in 1905 and has produced fountain pens up to 1958. Uh, 46 years later, in 2005, the company was revived and have been producing luxury fountain pens ever since. The pen arrives in this box. The top lifts off, and we have a couple of things in here. Uh, we have a warranty card, and then we have this unique black leather pen roll. Um, it's stamped with the company name, Anodo, as well as their logo medallion. Uh, now, the name Anodo doesn't really have any special meaning. It was just something the founders felt would be easy to remember and simple to pronounce in just about any language. Um, this roll is really high quality, uh, but it does seem to like take up a lot of space just for one pen, but it is very well constructed and the leather is very soft. The roll has a snap closure and then when you open it up inside we have a little felt sleeve. Um, I will say that this little felt pouch is of a higher quality than some of the similar types of pouches I've seen included with pens like this. And inside we have the pen. This is the Anoto Scholar. Uh, this particular model is called the Highland. It is made from a highly polished acrylic with unique patterns that are meant to reflect the green terrains and misty locks of the Scottish Highlands. It's an interesting take on what I call uh, the cracked ice resin. And then the trim on this pen is silver plated. Um, I have another Scholar here as well. This one is the Rosso. Uh, first of all, it actually came in a brown leather uh, roll. So I'm not quite sure if black and brown are interchangeable or if they match them up with individual pens. Um, this is a, a nice lighter, almost kind of salmon red. I'll give you a closer look at it during the uh, size comparisons. But for the sake of this review, I felt the material on the Highland was a bit more unique than the Rosso. Okay, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, I really like the Anoto logo. Uh, I mentioned this in the previous Anoto review as well, but at first glance, this logo just looks like an N and two O's. But if you look at it in its entirety, you can see that it spells out the name of the company uh, with the outline of the logo being the O, and then there's the N, and then O, and then there's the T, which separates the half and lower quadrants, and then the final O. I, you know, I like creative use of lettering like that. Uh, then there is the silver plated clip. Uh, the clip and band are all one piece. I really like the uh, unique pointed design of this clip. It tapers down to a point and has the company logo above the chevron pattern. Uh, this clip is a bit on the stiff side and it takes a bit of effort to use it in anything other than a thin shirt pocket or something like that. The cap angles up just slightly, only about half a millimeter from beginning to end. So with the naked eye, it essentially looks straight. At the end of the cap, we have a fairly wide band stamped with the Anoto name. Then the band angles down a bit and there's a small step down to the barrel. The barrel is straight, but then it tapers down over the last inch or so and the very end is flat. The cap twists off with a single rotation, and underneath is a gold-plated number 7 nib, which is available in either fine, medium, or broad. I thought this was interesting. On the Rosso's medium nib, it's stamped with an M, but on the fine nib of the Highland, there's no stamping at all. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with an angled ridge and then rises up at an even angle until you reach the threads and the remainder of the barrel. Uh, the section is resin. Um, I find that the ridge at the end doesn't impede my grip. Sometimes ridges like that can get in the way of my grip a little bit since I tend to grip my pens toward the very end of the uh, section. But this one works well for me and is very comfortable in the hand. The pen is fairly light. 
Uh, and it is just long enough to use unposted. The cap does post kind of. It doesn't post very deep at all and it isn't very secure. Um, it posts so shallow that I wondered if it was designed not to post at all. But if you push it on there with some intention, then it will stay. But I would recommend it's best to use this pen unposted. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Um, the barrel is all one solid piece and there's no metal in this section. So in theory, the pen could be used as an eyedropper if you so choose and if you're careful. The Anoto Scholar is available on the Van S website and retails for $270. I, you know, I do feel that's a bit on the high end in regard to a value proposition for this pen. Uh, would I like to see it priced around $75 less? Sure. Uh, but would I, it'd be nice to see just about every pen priced lower. Um, I will say that I've been impressed by the overall quality of Anoto pens that I've tested. Uh, and they perform very nicely as well. I'm not a huge fan of fine nibs, but the fine nib on this pen is outstanding. Uh, I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check out all of the Anoto Pens Van S offers. Thanks so again go out to Van S for giving me a chance to take a look at this pen. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. First off, I wanted to show you these uh, rolls again. These are actually kind of neat rolls. They just snap open and then they roll. I know you can barely see, you really can't get a good picture of it in the entire screen, but um, it's an interesting roll and it just rolls right up and snaps. And I like the uh, branding here and the medallion. And then this one is what the uh, brown leather looks like. So here we have the Anoto Scholar. I wanted to give you another closer look at that kind of cracked ice material. Um, just has an interesting look to it. Uh, and then this one was the Rosso model that I showed you earlier. And this one has gold trim and a two-tone nib there. Uh, and uh, this one is the medium nib. And that's what it looks like in comparison. Then we have a Visconti Van Gogh irises, then there is an Aurora Optima. In regard to a couple of other pens, here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point and a Sailor 1911 Large, and then finally here a Platinum 3776 Yamanaka. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with the Aurora Optima. And here it is with the 1911 Large. And then finally, here it is with the 3776. So here we go with a writing sample for the Anodo Scholar. And this particular one is the Highland. And this is a fine stainless steel nib. Uh, stainless steel with uh, gold plating on it. And the ink that I'm using, I thought it would appropriate to use a kind of olive ink for this olive pen, and that would be Pelican Edelstein Olivine. This is what the color looks like. It's kind of a deep green. Uh, this is what it looks like in comparison to Monteverde's Olivine, which is significantly lighter. And then here it is with Diamine's Mistletoe. This is what the Edelstein bottles look like, really solid. Uh, I believe the Olivine was one of the colors of the year that was distributed during some of the Pelican meetups uh, a number of years ago. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to them possibly getting back to having those Pelican meetups again. Those were always fun. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, 
Um, this fine nib is a little bit on the stiff side with a fair amount of feedback to it. Um, you're not going to get a lot of line variation out of this steel nib. Um, the ink flow, I'd say, is probably on the medium side. Not decent. And in regard to reverse writing, it does lay down a nice extra, extra fine line. And then in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. And then just to show you as a comparison, this is the medium nib on the Rosso. Um, I would say that this nib is significantly smoother with less feedback than the fine. Okay, so there we have the Anoto Scholar. This is the Highland as well as the Rosso. Um, if you're looking to round out your collection with something a little bit different, then this is well worth taking a look at. And I'll put a link in the notes below where you can check it out on the Van S site. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.